everybody. Welcome to another Whiteboard Wednesday. We're doing this one together, and today we're going to be talking all about can I negotiate venue AV charges? All right, here we go. The answer is yes. All right, so you guys actually want to hear more about this, I'm guessing, then. Well, my name is Will Kern, Endless Events. And I'm Brand Kruger. And we're, today we're talking about how to negotiate those fees and what do they look like. Um, before we jump in, one quick thing before I totally forget is we wrote a book all about this called How to Remove In-House AV Restrictions. We'll leave a link down below so that way you can download that and check it out and include some contract language when it comes to this. Um, and But the important thing is, yes, you can negotiate it out. So let's talk about what these fees look like starting off with Wi-Fi. Brant? Wi-Fi. So here's the deal with Wi-Fi, and, and more and more planners actually understand this more. They're, they're putting it in their contract more and more often now that, hey, if I'm going to bring my group to this venue, you're going to throw in Wi-Fi for my attendees, and you're going to make sure it's fast, and you're going to make sure it's good, and you're going to include it in the room. A lot of planners are starting to include language to that effect in their contracts already. Absolutely. So it's definitely something that people are more aware of. But there's still a lot of people that aren't, so we figure it's worth talking about. Totally. I mean, for, I say that Wi-Fi is the new like uh, wild, wild west when it comes to fees and things like that. It used to be, hey, I want to bring in my third-party AV company, therefore, boom, here's all the fees, get out of here. Now it's, oh yeah, I totally bring your in-house AV or your third-party AV company, but you're gonna instead spend thirty thousand dollars on Wi-Fi. But if you use the in-house, we'll give it to you for right. free. So make sure it's part of your negotiating strategy from the beginning. So before you even sign the contract with your venue, all of these things really, so let's just get that out of the way and we'll reiterate a couple of times. All of these things, get this as part of your negotiating before you sign the contract. Because, you know what they call um, before you sign the contract? Negotiating. Yes. And then what do they call it after you've signed the contract? I don't know. Begging. Oh. <laughs> right. So, yes, absolutely. So when you're talking about before, as you're negotiating whether or not you're going to bring your group to that venue, that's the time to talk about all of these things, especially starting with Wi-Fi. Awesome. So make sure you get that good Wi-Fi, make sure it's in the contract beforehand. Now we're talking about power. Obviously, you need electricity to get everything going when it comes to this. Brant, what do you mean by power? Here's the other part of the wild, wild west. So just like Wi-Fi, you never know exactly how you're going to be charged. and never gonna, So be sure when you're talking about Wi-Fi or power, you find out in advance exactly how you're going to be charged. So depending on where you are and what venue you're going to be in, that can really affect whether or not they're charging you by how much you use, whether it's just based purely on whether they have to bring in more equipment. Some places will actually even charge you for using just the individual outlets in the room. Now the reason that this happens is because depending on your location, some cities and states actually have laws on the books saying that you can't recharge for a public utility. Ooh. So they can't charge you for power, but they can charge you for the equipment, or they can charge fee. you for the outlets, they can charge you for the use, exactly, service fees and things like that. So really, be sure to find out exactly how you're going to get charged for power. Well Brant, what if someone says, I don't know how much power I'm going to need? That can be tricky, especially when you're first starting to get out. So the best advice that I can give, especially, and this goes for Wi-Fi as well, is once you're done with the event, if someone is charging you for the amount of power that you use or the amount of Wi-Fi, how much bandwidth that you use, make sure you get a report afterward and just keep that in a filing cabinet. So at least you can start to learn from time to time, okay, we used about this much bandwidth on our Wi-Fi. We used about this much power in our thing. Problem is, again, it, the pricing is all over the map. Oh, absolutely. And one thing, I mean, we always talk about getting your AV company included sooner in the process. This is why it's so helpful, because the AV company is there from the beginning. They can tell you, hey, that setup that we've been using for years, we usually need X for power. Right. And there you go. And sometimes the great AV companies will also do it for you and negotiate it for you. And we've said it before, and we'll say it again. You know, AV companies, bring us in earlier. You know, we can look at these contracts for you. We can look at the power charges. We can look at the Wi-Fi charges and help you negotiate as well. All right. Next up, rigging points. God, rigging. <sighs> uh, another point, pain point for clients. Make sure everybody knows what we're talking about when yeah, we're talking about rigging points. So rigging point essentially is hanging stuff from the ceiling. Um, sometimes it can also include uh, you doing some ground support, but most of the time it's talking about hanging things from the ceiling. Trussing, piping, lighting fixtures, sound systems, things like that. So the fees are things like actually tapping in the points, but right. also can mean some other things as well, right? Well, I mean, yeah, when we're talking about rigging points, rigging points, like you say, are the physical points in the ceiling that you're going to hang all of that stuff from. So the thing that I like to emphasize is that's 
permanent infrastructure, right? It's not like they have to go up to those points and put them in every time or inspect them every time or anything like that. Once they're there, they're there. So it literally costs them nothing uh, for you to, to hang from those points. Um, there's no maintenance or anything along those lines. So it's just really a way to charge you more money. Yeah, and these money. point charges can be several hundred dollars per point per day. Oh my gosh, so if you're talking, you know, a, a truss in the back hanging some lights, a truss in the front hanging some points, maybe you're doing some delay screens halfway through the audience. Man, that can 200, eight. 200, 400, 600, 800, then times per day. Yeah, all of a sudden you're spending three grand to just use those points that already exist in the ceiling. Now, the reason this happens is because a lot of in-house AV companies will go especially to older venues that don't have any rigging points in the ceiling. And they will pay, they will offer to pay to have these points physically, because you gotta weld the things into the, into the I-beams and all that kind of stuff. So there is work on the front end of doing this. And so they'll go to the venue and say, okay, we'll put these in for you, but then we get the right to charge for them. Yeah. So it's a win-win for the venue because they now have rigging points that they didn't have before and it costs them nothing. Absolutely. So, But again, you can always negotiate this out. Whether or not they need to make the money or not, you can negotiate it out and some venues will be willing to give it to you for free because they want to earn your business. Whereas another venue might be like, yo, we're totally cool with making money. Um, so obviously negotiate it out first. Right. I think that's the biggest lesson. And so all of these things influence this, right? So it's kind of the carrot and the stick mentality, right? So You've got two ways to incentivize someone. One is to give them the carrot, and the other one is to get them with the stick, right? So here's the carrot. The carrot is, okay, if you use the in-house AV company, we'll throw in the Wi-Fi for free, or we'll give you upgraded service. If you use the in-house AV, we'll throw in the power for free, or give you upgraded service. If you use the in-house AV, we'll throw in the rigging points for, for rigging points for free. Or all of the above, plus we'll give you a 20% discount for using the in-house AV company. Wow! As long as you don't go to the third-party AV company. But here's the thing. All of those things, that's the carrot, right? And then the stick is that if you do go with a third-party company, they will frequently have in the contract, you've got to you've got to give us a 10% of whatever you're paying them or 20% of whatever you're oh paying them gosh. as a fee for bringing that third-party in. And then sometimes, too, you have more... Um, physical manifestations of these as well. Things like, for example, babysitting fees. If you ever had an AV person literally sit in the room just to watch the AV company? Or, for example, very common in a lot of properties, carpet protection. Yeah, there is the plastic you have to buy, but they're definitely overcharging for it. And to be honest, wouldn't you think the venue would already have it already because they have to protect the carpet every single time, right? right. Uh, obviously, I'm very bitter about well, this so, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's your business, right? Yeah, yeah. Totally. But but there's you know it's not just those things. And a lot of a lot of times there are union rules. So to be fair, there are will sometimes be union rules. Like you've got to have shadow labor and things like Absolutely. that. I know we've covered in some other uh, some other other of the whiteboard Wednesdays. Um, but that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about here is literally uh, they'll have in the contract that if you're bringing in a third party company, you need to have a supervisor there uh, who's there to make sure that you're following all the rules of the venue. You know, Absolutely. using brown tape on the carpet or, you know, things like that. So usually a lot of made up stuff. But mysteriously, that all goes away if you use the in-house AV company. Now, Ooh, interesting. what does all of this have to do with? <laughs> it goes back to what we were joking about at the beginning, but it's absolutely true. All of this is negotiable. Big Y. All of this is negotiable before you sign the contract. I like to tell a lot of people, venue contracts, you know, it's a lot like buying a used car. So if you go to the car dealership and you're like, oh, this is the one I love. I love this car. And then test drive, you're like, I love this car. They're like, we got you. You're hooked. Totally. But if they think you're prepared to walk away, and if they believe that you're prepared to walk away, you have a much stronger negotiating tech point. So a lot of times, you, you know, you go to the venue and, you, you know, it's got a great spa and beautiful views and the rooms are gorgeous. But... Yeah, so if you're hooked, there's no incentive for them, you know, to, to negotiate any of this stuff away. But if really, honestly, you uh, are prepared to walk away from that venue if they're not going to include these things, you have the power as the planner. And that's something that I always want to make sure is that whenever it comes to negotiating any of those things, you have the power. So if you're tired of paying extra for Wi-Fi and too much for power and too much for rigging points and you're having to pay third-party AV fees, walk away. 
But I, I, didn't expect, I didn't expect you to literally <laughs> walk away. So that, I think, brings us to the end of Whiteboard Wednesday for this week. Yeah. Um, this has been so fantastic having Brant on as Woo. a guest uh, for a little couple episodes if you guys liked. If you liked Brant, give a thumbs up and give us some, him some love down in the comments below. But if you had some crazy AV fees recently or a good negotiation strategy, we'd love to hear in the comments. Leave it down below. Leave us a comment about what you thought. However, if you really love this video, what do they do, Brant? Thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. Thumbs if you, up. And if you didn't like it and you thought it sucked, give us a thumbs down, but leave us a comment and let us know how we can do better. However, if you really, really love these videos, you want to get more, there's a little button down there that says subscribe. Click on that. Click the little bell icon so you can get notifications and join our subscription squad. And um, I think that's going to end it for yeah. Whiteboard Wednesday this week. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.